Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah It's very important for us to maintain uh, the Islamic Brotherhood and that we should strive our utmost to be brothers in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem innamu mu'minun ikhwa Verily the believers are brothers the Prophet Sallallahu said uh, forbade us from spying and turning our backs and attacking one another and uh, cheating one another. Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Kunnu ibad Allahi ikhwana and be all of you brothers after he mentioned some of the sinful practices that often take place in the community of cutting one another off, spying on one, one another. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا تَجَاسِسُوا وَلَا تَنَاجِسُوا وَلَا تَبَاغَدُوا وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا وَكُنُّوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا The Prophet ﷺ said, do not spy on one another. Do not turn your backs on one another. Do not cut off one another. You know, making hajr for issues of the dunya. Uh, and do not uh, cheat one another and be brothers. So we know that this is an obligation, this is wajib upon us, that we have to be brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers united on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. That is what the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ordered with. That is what we're commanded with. That is what is an obligation upon us. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which shows us so many benefits and we're going to talk about some of them bi'idnillah ta'ala from the perspective of Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Raji hafadhallahu ta'ala. قال, this is in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim, in his explanation. قال, حدثنا قتيبة ابن سعيد عن مالك ابن أنس فيما قرية عليه عن سحيل عن أبيه عن أبي هريرة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تفتح أبواب الجنة يوم الاثنين ويوم الخميس فيغفر لكل عبد لا يشرك بالله شيئا إلا رجلان كانت بينه وبين أخيه شهناء فيقال أنظروا هذين حتى يصطلحا أنظروا هذين حتى يصطلحا أنظروا هذين حتى يصطلحا So in this hadith of Sahih Muslim a hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تل عنه that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى عليه وسلم said تُفْتَحُوا أَبْوَابَ الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَ الْإِثْنَيْنِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْخَمِيسِ That the gates of paradise, تُفْتَحُوا أَبْوَابَ الْجَنَّةِ The gates of paradise are open, يَوْمَ الْإِثْنَيْنِ which is Monday, is Monday, وَيَوْمَ الْخَمِيسِ and يَوْمَ الْخَمِيسِ which is Thursday. تُفْتَحُوا أَبْوَابَ الْجَنَّةِ The gates of paradise are open on Mondays and Thursday, and every servant, meaning they have to be Muslim, that does not commit an act of shirk with Allah, doesn't commit any act of shirk with Allah, uh, will be forgiven on Mondays and Thursdays. And then the Prophet ﷺ made his stith now. Illa rajalan, except two. Except two. Between them, uh, between one and his brother, there was uh, discord, disharmony. You know, they were beefing with one another. They had hatred for one another. They were making hajr of one another that was ghayr mashroor. Because there's a mashroor hajr. There's a time when it's permissible if someone's committing bid'ah, or you're afraid of the harm of their bid'ah, or you're afraid of their ma'asi and their sinfulness, whatever the case may be. And that has to do with the dawabit and the criterion for hajr. But that's outside of what we want to talk about here. So, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِلَّا رَجَلَ كَانَتْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَخِيهِ شَهْنَا Except for the man, so I misinterpreted first, except for the man who, between him and his Muslim brother, there is discord or disharmony. And then it is said, it will be said to the malaika, 
you know, uh, do not get, grant them this forgiveness until they rectify. And it's said three times. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu there are immense benefits. It shows us that first we need to be brothers. And we need to rectify and work out our differences. Another benefit of this hadith, it shows us, as the Shaykh mentioned, the fada'il, or the superiority of, yom, uh, of uh, Mondays and Thursdays. And those are days when what? That you should fast. It also shows us that the gates of paradise are open on that day and we can gain forgiveness as long as you don't commit shirk. So it also shows us the importance of tawheed and a stern warning against shirk. As, as Imam Muhammad said, he said, He said, the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded was tawheed, was to worship him, him, him alone. And the most serious thing that he warned us against is committing shirk, worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a partner with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And we already know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al al I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. That's the divine purpose, which is tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ala ta'budu illa yahu wa bil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your Lord has ordered for you to worship Him and Him alone. And to your parents, be obedient or righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem, wa'budu Allah wa la tushiriku bi shayin. Worship Allah alone and do not commit uh, and associate partners with Him. So we know the command for Tawheed is the greatest command. As the Imam said, And the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us with is Tawheed, is worshiping Him and Him alone. Imam uh, Abdulaziz al Raji, Hafidullah ta'ala, mentioned about this hadith. He said the statement of the Prophet when he said, uh, 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 in another, He mentioned another hadith. There's another hadith here which also uh, affirms for us another hadith in Sahih Muslim, and we'll go over it quickly, uh, in which the Prophet والسلام, said, أتركوا أو أوركوا هذين حتى يفيا. So this also has the same meaning that only here in this hadith the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said the the de <coughs> the deeds <coughs> the deeds of the believer are raised up to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that Allah will will look at these deeds في كل جمعة. And you know, and he said Maratain. He said the Jumwa, and then also on Yomo, uh, the Mondays and Thursdays, as we mentioned. Except for the two who have uh, problems with one another. So Imam uh, Abdulaziz al Raji, half of the law ta'ala, he said, Fikulli Jumwa. He said, uh, mentioning about the statement where the Prophet وسلم, said every Jumwa, he said, Yani Fikulli Isbu. So here the term Jumwa, it is re in reference to. Although we know the fawa'id and the fada'il of Jumu'ah, but he says it, the meaning here is it's referring, because from Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah uh, is, uh, you know, is the time period of a, of a week. And so here, this is referring to uh, uh, Isbur, the week. So this Jumu'ah, what he means, the meaning here is uh, weekly. Weekly, the deeds are looked at. And he said, fi kulli Jumu'ah, yani fi kulli Isbur, every week. And the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, a Jumu'ah, il a Jumu'ah, uh, he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, forgiveness uh, for a Jumu'ah, a Jumu'ah, il a Jumu'ah, wa Umrah, il a Umrah, wa Hajj al-Mabrur, laysa lahu jizai il al-Jannah, that there is forgiveness for the servant 
uh, weekly from Jumwa to Jumwa, you get forgiveness. And between, <coughs> excuse me, between Umrah and Umrah. So between if you made Umrah and to the next time you Umrah, you need forgiveness. And so there's forgiveness between that time for those doing those great deeds and those great acts of ibadah. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, that the accepted Hajj, there's no reward for it except Jannah. So, the per so it shows us the importance of Hajj as well, obviously. So why I mention this hadith here, because Imam Rajihi, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, mentions and makes ishara here. He says, That Allah will give grant forgiveness to the servant on that day. On that day. This is the statement of the Prophet So he explains, he says, So it's very important. In ijtanibu kaba'ir ma tanhona anhu. So, uh, Imam uh, Raji, he mentions about that portion of the hadith. He mentions, he said, that this forgiveness that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned in this hadith, laysa mutlaq, o laysa mutlaqa. It is not absolute. This is not absolute forgiveness. Okay? Now he's going to explain. He says, uh, Instead, it is restricted forgiveness. What do we mean by restricted forgiveness? He said, So it's restricted. It's not just forgiveness for all the sins, but that it's forgiveness for the sins as long as you stay away from the major sins. So it's because we have a ayah, a, 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 a nas. We have a text, a divine text from the book of Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which he says, Verily, in tajtanibu kabair. If, <clears throat> if you stay away from the major sins that you were prohibited from. So that ayat restricts the meaning of that hadith, meaning that hadith is not ala itlaq, the forgiveness there is not general, but it's restricted by this other text, which is the, the Qur'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that you're not going to get absolute forgiveness between Jumwas, just for attending Jumwa, unless you stay away from the major sin. So if you're committing zina, if you're doing uh, riba, you know, uh, usury, uh, you know, you've got all kind of other major sins, then no, that's not forgiveness. You're, you're not gaining forgiveness for those things, but it's forgiveness for the sava'in, for the, for the minor sins. And may Allah forgive us of all of our sins. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he said, hadith. It's also restricted from a hadith of the Prophet wasallam. <clears throat> and this was the hadith I was trying to remember, and he mentions it here. He said, Salawat al-Khams wal Jumu'a ala Jumu'a wa Ramadan al Ramadan mukafirat ma yanhunna uh, bainuhunna <clears throat> so he said, Salawat al Khams, the five daily prayers, and Jumwa to Jumwa, and Ramadan up to Ramadan are an expiation. So they expiate what happens between them as long as a person stays away from the major sins. So again, this Nas from the Prophet also restricts the other text. And lets us know that just from Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah you gain forgiveness. Ramadan to Ramadan you gain forgiveness. Uh, your five daily prayers between the prayers by making wudu and, and making the prayers. You gain forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the minor sins. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, As long as you stay away from the major sins. And so Imam Raji Hafid Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَفِي هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ دَلِيلَ عَلَى شَهْنَا وَتَهَاجِرْ مِنْ أَسْبَابْ حُرْمَانَ الْمَغْفِرَ So very important to realize this. So he says, from these hadith that were mentioned, this is evidence to support that having enmity and, uh, you know, having uh, discord and disharmony between Muslim brothers uh, and Muslim sisters and cutting one another off to hajir, 
to cutting one another off is from the reasons of being a prohibited from forgiveness from Allah. So who wants to be, who doesn't want to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I don't think any of us want to go in that route. All of us want forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he says, "Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah, fal wajib al hadr min kulli ma kana ha'ilan duni maghfirat duni maghfirat Allah Ta'ala." So he says, "And there is no might or power except with Allah." He said it's an obligation to warn against those things which form a barrier between yourself and the forgiveness of Allah. And then he says, well, fiha, meaning fi, in, in this hadith, fadla hadain yomain. It shows us uh, the importance and the superiority of Mondays and Thursdays. Wa annahuma ta'arad fihima al-a'mal ala Allah ta'ala. And those days, the deeds are raised up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah looks at your deeds those days. So this is a very important reminder. Do your good uh, good deeds every day but of course to fast those days and in general seek forgiveness because they are superior days and he says he said even if Yomul Jumwa is better than those two days so obviously Jumwa in which we need to prepare for is better and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to uh, be of the people of forgiveness and not to have discord between our brothers and our, our Muslim brothers and our Muslim sisters. May Allah grant us all forgiveness, guidance, and paradise. Forgive the Muslims everywhere for the many sins that we commit. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.